and good morning church hey church welcome to memorial united methodist church the greatest methodist church in the world hey welcome people online as well uh, those who are worshiping with us either on our united methodist uh, church memorial united methodist church uh, online website or on facebook i'm so happy that you join us today i hope that Wherever you are, the Spirit of God will be with you today and you will be challenged by our God. Friends, long time ago, God created us and we are here today. And then we have this great relationship with God. But then there is something broken, something wrong going on. That is why Jesus came, Jesus went to the cross, died for our sin, and we are very forever grateful. And that is why we are here today, to worship our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? Hey, we are not here to think about political reason. We are not here to think about a social club. We are not the social club. We are not the, social, uh, the, the political association. But we are here as a community of faith to worship our Lord Jesus Christ, to receive the blessing from God, to receive the call from God. And I pray that today, through our whole service, the prayer the singing, the liturgy, the sermon, the scripture reading, the offering, the Holy Communion, and all these elements of worship today will feed you, will make you leave this place knowing that God has called you to a higher purpose, knowing that God is with you, and knowing that you are the light, you are the salt to the world. Are you ready to worship? All right, friends, let me ask you again. Are you ready to worship? Yes. All right, and now I, I invite the acolyte to come down. The acolyte are going to come down with the light of Christ. We are here together. We are hoping that the light of Christ will shine in us, through us, and through our orders as well. Wherever there is darkness, there is light of Christ. And we are called to be the light of Christ. The acolyte bring down the candles to remind us that the Spirit of God are with us today. Very cute, don't you think they are? Yeah. They must be from a good, handsome father. I'm the father, by the way. All right, friends, it's been a great time with you. Thank you so much for joining us. I would like to invite our fearless leader, our liturgist, to help us in time of worship today. Come on, Ruby. Good morning, everyone. And for our online brothers and sisters, good morning and happy Sunday to everyone. My name is Ruby Bagel, and I work with the youth group uh, from ages 12 to 19. So I invite everyone, for those of you who have those uh, youth in your families, please join us every Wednesday hanging out with Jesus. And I want to share, yesterday we had our youth car wash and egg roll sale. It was very successful. <laughs> and we would like to thank our Hmong brothers and sisters, especially the women. They work very hard for our egg roll sale. They made 500 egg rolls and we were sold out. So if you did not get a chance, you miss out. So, but we will have another chance. November 6th, we will have another egg roll sale. So, so, and please don't forget to look at the bulletin. We have so many activities that will fit every, uh, every age group. So, um, please join me in our call to worship responsively. The kingdom of God is at hand. We want to enter its kingdom. The mercy of God is made known. We want to receive this mercy. The grace of God is abundant for all. We praise you, O God, for your compassion and your love. Accept our grateful praise as we come to worship you today. Please join me in our Lord's Prayer, starting with our Hmong language.
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you to please stand if you're able for our scripture reading. And it is in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 7, verses 17 to 31. And it's the rich man from the New Revised Standard Version. As he was setting out on a journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witnesses. You shall not defraud. Honor your father and mother. He said to him, teacher, I have kept all this since my youth. And Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said, You lack one thing. Go sell what you own and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasures in heaven. Then come and follow me. And when he heard this, he was shocked and went away grieving, for he had many possessions. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were perplexed at these words. But Jesus said to them again, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were greatly astounded and said to one another, then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, for mortals, it is impossible, but not for God. For God, all things are possible. Peter began to say to him, Look, we have left everything and followed you. Jesus said, Truly I tell you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for my sake and for the sake of the good news who will not receive a hundredfold now in this age. Houses, brothers and sisters, mothers and children and fields with persecutions and in the age to come, eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last will be first. These are the words of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Let's now invite, you may be seated, let us now invite the children. All right, friends, as our children are coming up for a time of children moment, can you please give them a big round of applause? <laughs> Do you like our worship service so far? Yeah. Hey, look around. Look at, look at our, our, how many people we have today in, in, in church, all right? Look around. Maybe you wave at each other, you know? Our traditional church, we used to get up and go around, shake hands and hugs and all that, right? But with this pandemic, we are not allowed to do so. At least we can come to worship with masks on, all right? Just, just look around and smile at each other and enjoy each other's presence. Without further ado, Let's hear our children's moment. Good morning, children of God. How are you all doing today? Thumbs up, we're doing amazing. Sideway thumbs, we're not sure yet. And then thumbs down. 
It's just not today. I'm doing good. All right. I have some treasures here. Well, they're my treasures. You guys know what this is? Whoops, almost fell out. Getting in trouble for that. So this is a treasure of mine. This was my engagement ring. Or it still is my engagement ring, but I'm not wearing it. <laughs> you guys want to take a look at it? You can pass it down. Here's another treasure of mine. Do you guys know who this is? Ooh, is that, that was me. This is my favorite superhero, Batman. You can pass that around, see that? This is the first tennis bracelet I received from the pastor. You see all of that? Yeah, it's bling bling. Too bad I don't wear it. <laughs> and then this is my first iPhone ever, it's an iPhone 7, because before I refused to use Apple products. So there's my Batman superhero. See, that's mommy's engagement ring. Someday that can be yours. So these are my treasures, and these are my, cat, uh, my um, rhinestone cat ears that I used to like to wear when I was a preschool teacher. You guys want to take a look at that? And then, this is a Hot Wheel Camaro from 1983. It's a pretty heavy metal car. They don't make Hot Wheels like these anymore. Usually it's like plastic all over. So I've always wanted a Camaro. But then, my mom, it's kind of changed because I have kids now. This is Philo's treasure and Shiloh's too. It's called a moon ball. Yes, and Shiloh says he has his own. We just didn't bring it. So these are all my treasures. It's nice to have our own treasures, right? And then, you know, like with the scripture, like, do you think you guys can give up your own treasures? Can you give up all your toys? Philo, can you do that? Yeah, it's hard to do that, but you know in the scripture, there was a, this um, rich man was asking Jesus, like, how do I get into heaven? And then, then these are these set of rules. He said, do you follow those rules? He said, yes, I've been doing that since I was younger. And they said, okay, well, can you get rid of all your stuffs? Get rid of, give away all your money. And then the rich man was like, are you crazy? I worked hard for all of this. You want me to give this all up? And so then he walked away and then Jesus went to his disciples and he said, you know, it's challenging when you have a lot of stuff. But because of that, it's easier for a camel. Oh, I don't have a picture of a camel, but to go through an eye of a needle than it is for a rich man to enter heaven. Can you fit through this needle? No? Can you guys fit through this needle? Maybe um, you think a, a camel can fit through that needle? Maybe a camel with no humps named Humphrey? <laughs> no, that's hard. But with God, all things are possible. You guys know that? With God, all things are possible because through his son, we can go to heaven. We can be in the kingdom of heaven. Because there's no amount of money or anything that we can do can get us to heaven. It's through Jesus. Because nothing we can do compares to what Jesus did on the cross. What did he do on the cross, Philo? Die. He died for our sins to give us grace and a new life. So we need to remember that, you know, it's fun to have toys and we do need a certain amount of money to survive, to get through. But we have to remember that nothing is worth more than Jesus and his love for us. Can you guys remember that? All right, let's close in prayer, my friends. Bow our heads, repeat after me, dear God. We thank you for the blessings and for blessing us with all that we need. 
Help us to grow. Help us to grow. And trust in you. And trust in you. And not depend on our things for joy. Not depend on our things for joy. You are worth more than any treasure. You are worth more than any treasure. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your love. We love you, God. We love you, God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, let's all go back to our seats. All right, big round of applause for our children. <laughs> you just saw a wonderful children moment. I don't know how to top that. that that's very, very good, right? All the bling bling and everything. So, yeah, uh, one, one guy saw a lady wearing a big diamond ring. And he said, ma'am, wow, your ring is it's just so amazing. I'm actually a jeweler. I, I, I know what diamond is like. And jewel is like none like others. Like this is the best. What is that? And the lady said, well, this is clock diamond. The biggest clock diamond that you can ever find. Wow, that is so precious, ma'am. That's amazing. How do you like it? She said, well, I like it, but it comes with a curse. The gentleman was like, what curse? And the lady said, the curse is Clark himself. It is given by Clark. Now Clark is the curse. You understand it? Oh, man, the lady is kind of, yeah, I know, right? It comes with it. All right, friend, that's supposed to be a joke. But anyway, <laughs> let us let's be in the attitude of prayer, all right? Let us close our eyes. Breathe deeply and slowly. Let, let rest your feet on the floor. Sit comfortably. Adjust your posture a little bit. Maybe straight up your shoulder. Roll your neck around and relax all your muscle. Rest your hands on either the pew or on your laps. Continue to breathe deeply and slowly. Breathe in God's grace and breathe out God's praise. Relax all your muscles, uh, especially your facial muscles. Uh, just relax it. Close your eyes and breathe. And now it is time for you to contemplate. I I'm going to give you a, a, a minute in, in a time of silent prayer. So you can, you can come to God either to listen to God or to pray or to give him your prayer or petition. I invite you to include me in your prayer, include the whole uh, church family in your prayer, include the whole world in your prayer. I invite you to ask God to bless you as you are uh, trying to get something out of the scripture today. Maybe it is through the scripture reading or through the song that we sang in the prayer or even through the sermon today. God of the universe, thank you so much for creating all of us. Thank you for your gift of love. Thank you for the relationship that we have with you, Lord. May we continue to grow this relationship. And Lord, today, as we are trying to dive deep into your word, may you speak to us. And so, Lord, I ask that the word of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to your sight, because you are our rock and you are our redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The rich young ruler, eh? What else do you need more than that? You need wealth so you can live comfortably, so you're not scary, so you can deal with some difficult situation. You need health. Right? As you are young, you are strong, you can overcome a lot of other obstacles. Some of you are still in this wonderful age. Some of you is turning 40 this month. Right? That's me. And we are still enjoying this, you know, wonderful prime time. Right? And then rules, and then power, and then position, prestige. Fame, 
popularity. What else do you want more than that? Isn't it like the, the prime of our life? We want to be the rich, young rulers. Not just only you, but, 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 but you also love the rich, young rulers. Can you imagine if, if there is a person coming into our church right now? And you know that this person is our young council member of our city. And he wants to belong to our church. What do you think will happen to the pastor? The pastor will reach to the person, right? Wow, welcome to this wonderful church because we want more people like that. Power, fame, age. We want to grow our church young and all that, right? There's nothing wrong with it. But is that all that we are looking for? This rich young ruler that we just read, he ran to Jesus, knelt before him and asked him, good teacher, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? Wait, but I thought this guy has everything. But no, he is lacking something. There is a big hole in his heart that nothing can ever fill this hole. He's been trying his best, doing whatever he can, whatever he was taught. He is so successful, he's so famous, but it is not satisfied. He is looking for something. There is a black hole in his heart. Nothing can ever fill this hole. What is going on here? This gentleman, he was so humble. He ran to Jesus. Look, this guy is an elite guy. This guy is a top guy. Everybody knows him. The elite don't show this manner running in the public, let alone running to Jesus. This is not a good manner. Remember Nicodemus? Nicodemus was one of the religious leaders who wanted to, to have something to do with Jesus, but he didn't dare to walk to Jesus during the daytime. He went to meet Jesus at night, so nobody knows what he was going through. But this gentleman, he was looking for something so hard, he knows Jesus can give him something that will satisfy his life. And so he was so humble, regardless of what his prestige is, he ran to Jesus. More than that, right after he met Jesus, he was on his knees. He knelt down in front of Jesus. But wait, he is a ruler. He has power. Why would he be kneeling down in front of Jesus? Because he was so humble. At this moment, nothing else matters but only what Jesus will offer to him. Many people came to Jesus, especially those type of religious leader, those type of educated people. They come to Jesus with trick question. The question that might cause problem to Jesus regardless of how Jesus answered. But this guy came to Jesus, asked very practical question. Jesus Good teacher, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? The most important question that each and every one of us should always ask. You know, sometimes as church, we are not humble enough. Sometimes as church, we are not humble enough to come to God and ask the most important question. We come to church because we want to drive our agenda. We want everybody to follow our agenda. But church is not about political, it's not a political club. It's not a, a social club. You can go to a democratic association to run your political situation. You can go to Rory Club to make friends. You go to Chamber of Commerce to build your network. But when you come to church, you better ask this question. Good teacher, Jesus, I know you are good. You've been changing lives. You've been changing my life. And now I'm lacking something. And I want you to help me, please. What can I do to inherit eternal life? You know, this gentleman, he's, 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 he's a religious man. 
He knew what the Bible said, what the scriptures say, what the Hebrew Bible say. He followed all the commandments. He now is in front of Jesus. It's like a foot away from Jesus. But he didn't see what it takes to inherit eternal life. His eyes is blind. He just cannot see anymore. And when I was reading this, I remember a song that say, Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. To see you high and lifted up. Shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. And I want to see you. That is a practical question. That should be the intent of we as a family of faith coming together, wearing masks through the pandemic, fight throughout all the fear. We can just stay home to get away from the pandemic, but we decide to come here because we want to see Jesus, because we want to have that relationship with Jesus, that Jesus will show you the way, show you the hope, and remind you about the blessing that he has bestowed upon you so far. More than that, is to lift each other up, to be the encouragement for one another as we are going through this together. I want you to look at each other right now. Turn to the left, turn to your right. Yeah? Look, look at each other. You know what, when I say turn to the left, turn to the right, you just look at each other back because you just cannot see each other, right? Because when you turn, somebody else turn too. But now look, how about this? People on my right, turn to my left. People on my left, turn to my right. Okay, now look. And you look across each other's eyes, okay? And you smile at one another. This is your community of faith, friend. This is when we come together to accomplish new things, to be the light, to be the salt of this world. To be like this group of the, of the mission thrift store that comes every Tuesday to set up everything and to sell the product so that the money can go to the mission of the United Methodist Church, so that we can reach out to the world, so that we can share the gospel of Jesus Christ to a different part of the world, so people can see hope, people can experience forgiveness, and people can experience love through our Jesus Christ. Good job, Mission Thrift Store. You give $5,000 to our church. Again, this, is, this does not really come directly to our church. It comes directly to our church budget, but it goes to our denomination for the mission of the United Methodist Church in the world. Good job. It's not about money, but it's about the mission that we are doing together. Right? And then Jesus, as this gentleman come down, Jesus looked at him. Jesus showed love to him and said to him, one thing you lack Go and sell all you possess and give to the poor and you will be and you will have treasure in heaven and come and follow me. I love it. Because every passage that we read, you see Jesus' love toward the people around him. And that is why I always love to say, I love you and Jesus loves you. And there's nothing you can do about it, amen? Let's give a big round of applause to Jesus. Hey, let's say this together, all right? I want you on my right to say to people on the left, and people on the left to say to people on the right, all right? Remember what we said? I love you, Jesus loves you, and there's nothing you can do about it. And we will say it together, and we say it, we want to make sure that the right will speak louder than the left, all right? And the left, we have got, we got to over, overpower the, the right, all right? Okay, one, two, three. I love you. Jesus loves you. And there's nothing you can do about it. There's absolutely nothing you can do about it. This rich, young ruler came to Jesus with heart of love, humility in front of Jesus and before anything. 
Jesus showed love to him. Isn't it amazing? And then Jesus said, you lack one thing. That you need to sell all your possession, give it to the poor, come and follow me. That's the core of the message throughout the Bible, friends. Even in the book of, in, in the book of Genesis, when, when, when God spoke to Abram, saying, hey, Abram, I'm going to bless your name. Your name is going to be great. Everybody will follow you. But now guess what? May this blessing pour out from you to others as well. It's not all about you. But it's about you and others. I bless you so you can bless others. Jesus is saying, sell all your possession. I've been blessing you. You've been blessed. Sell all your possession. Give it to the poor. Come and follow me. That is the core of the message. Jesus hid it right in the spot. Wow. That was the most important thing that the gentleman has been looking for. It's very, very challenging. Very, very challenging. Hit the spot, eh? Look at this picture. The picture. Do you see the picture? Yeah, that one. You see that? Who is that guy? I was making donuts. My wife and I own a donut shop for two years. I made the best donut in the world. If you eat, if you eat my donut, you will always come back to buy some more. Right? That's a very difficult job. And they ask, Pastor, since you were making donut, do you still like donut? I still like donut. And Andy asked, which donut do you like the most? I like the donut hole. Because the donut hole has no calorie whatsoever. It's a hole, right? The best donut hole is when you, you see those donut holes? That little hole there? It's when you lift it up from the fryer, and you put it onto the glaze tray, and you glaze it, and the glaze drip because of the hot, the hot uh, donut, and then you wait for a minute when it is enough, cold enough, or still very hot, and you grab it with your fingers, and nobody see it, and you pop it in your mouth, because you are the only baker at 2 o'clock in the morning, right? Nobody see it. You are in the, in the store by yourself. And you pop in your mouth, and then all of a sudden you, you heard the angel, the choir of angels singing behind you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You know, it's like the, the donuts start to melt in your mouth. It feels so good. It just hit the spot. Two years later, 35 pounds later, <laughs> Man, close your eye and think about it. Remember when you eat that the most delicious, you know, whatever treat that you like? You're just like, you know, chewing and you just don't close your mouth and you just keep mourning. Um, um, you know, it's so good. Oh, man. My second one, right? Before you know it, a dozen a donut hole is gone. <laughs> right? Oh, man. When it hit the spot, you were like, wow, what's going on? The gentleman was in front of Jesus, hearing the most critical, important answer to him. And look at how he responded. Verse 22, but he was deeply dismayed by these words. And he went away grieving, for he was one who owed much property. Isn't it what the Bible say? Where your treasure is, there your heart also. Think first the kingdom of God, and everything else will be added unto you. Friends, where is your treasure? Where is your treasure? Are you worshiping God, or are you worshiping your possession? What are you doing right now? Are you asking God the most important question in your life? What are you doing? And you know, sometimes you just ignore it, right? You, you, you don't care. You don't worry. You don't worry about your spiritual life. God is not important for you. You come to church or not, it's all up to you. You are the rulers. You are the controller. Why do you have to worry? You have all the wealth. You have all the possession. You don't need to worry about God. Right? But, but look at the fact that this rich young ruler who has everything but still look for the most important part of his life that can 
feel his heart, that is looking for the relationship that he wants to have with Jesus, to hear the teaching that Jesus can give to him so he can feel his heart. If that rich young ruler need that much, how much more do you need it? Because some of you might be rich, but you are not young anymore. Some of you are young, but your pocket is empty. You know, you don't drive a Camaro. You know what I'm saying? If you lack all that much, how much more do you need God? It's not just only about you. How about people around you? Your friends, your relatives, your co-workers. Have you ever thought that Christ would make their life better? Have you ever thought to invite them to belong, to belong to the community of faith so that they can experience the satisfaction that God can give to them? Think about that. Maybe you are yearning for that. Maybe you are looking for it, friends. And you are here today not by accident, but by divine appointment. And I pray that God will reach you, reach out to you, wherever you are. You know, even Jesus said, children, how hard is it? How hard is it to enter the kingdom of God? It is easier for a camel to go through the eyes of a needle than a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. That is when you idolize your properties, your positions, your possession. When, when those possessions become idols for your life, it's so hard. I hope those things are not your idols. I hope God is always first. And the rest is just the blessing God has given to you. And that you remember God wants you to go out and be the light and the soul of this world. That you will bless others because God has blessed you. That you will bless the community of faith that you are being blessed through. That it is not about your possession, but it's about your relationship with God. That you're going to continue to build that relationship through reading the Bible, through prayer, through doing the mission, through coming to this community of faith. So that you can continue to be encouraged, to be lifted up, to be re-energized all the time. And more than that, that you can be the witness to the world, the witness of God's grace, God's love, God's forgiveness... To all the world, friends, do you know that the world needs forgiveness? The world needs God's love? The world needs the message of mercy? Go and tell the world, be the witness of Christ. You once did that membership vow just like what Daniel just did. That you promised to be the witness of Christ to all the world. But then you come to me and say, but pastor, it's so hard. They don't listen to me. They don't accept my invitation. They don't want anything to do with me. I want you to watch this video. This video is talking about a person who is yearning, who is, no long, who is not a part of the church, but they want to be a part of the church. Let's watch this. It's going to be full, full of people just like me, full of people who haven't been to church in a while, full of people who think they might be criticized or analyzed, full of people who don't have God in their lives or people who don't know how to come back to him. But you know what? Before I come in, I need you to do something. And it's gonna be something I think that's gonna be hard for you. You're gonna see me this week, and I need you to not just walk on by. I need you to work through your fear because I'm working through mine. I need you to stop and ask me how I'm doing. 
and then really listen to my answer. And then just come right out and ask me, can I pray for you? Then invite me to church. I may act like I don't even want to go with you, but I need you to ask me. I need you to help me see God. And I don't even know what that means. I need you more than you know. Because look, at the end of the day, God said he loved me enough to die for me. I mean, that is the claim, right? And if he died and didn't stay dead, your church could be full this weekend. Full of people just like me. Different skin color, different face, different race, different social status. And I could be sitting right next to you. But I just need you to invite me. Nothing more, nothing less, nothing complicated. Just invite me. I need you to. I really do. Some of you are the rich young rulers. Some of you are the young rulers. Some of you are just rulers. You've got a pack of hot dogs in the kitchen. Some of you are just Jew. I need you to ask this question. God, what must I do to inherit the eternal life, to be a part of the kingdom of God? And I want you to hear how Jesus answered to you. Come and follow me. Come and follow me so you will be my disciples, so the world will be blessed through you as well. And I want you to be my witness throughout the world. And you may still say, Pastor, it's so hard. The lady just said, work out through your fear, because I'm also working out through my fear. You say, but it's impossible. Now the scripture, verse 27, Jesus said, with people, yes, it is impossible. But not with God, for all things are possible with God. Can we say this together? For all things are possible with God. I like how Colin Smith, one of the very good authors said, grace is more than God opening door to salvation, but it is God's bringing people in it. Let me say it again. God, grace is more than God opening the door to salvation. It is God bringing people in. God would like to bring people in. Let us do that. Let us allow people to come in to experience the salvation and the forgiveness of God. It is because when they come in together, they will be in this fellowship with Christ, just like Christ with his disciples. Remember on that day when Christ called his disciples to come together in the upper room. It's been a while that they've been walking with Christ, that they, they are in this relationship with Christ. And now Christ wants to give them that last common, that last commandment to them. It is on the upper room when their disciples could come together for a time of Holy Communion. And today, when you came in, you were given the, old, uh, the communion elements. I, I would like to invite you to bring it out. And, and make sure you have a napkin underneath you, just in case it spills on you. On the top part, it is the wafer. It's the, the, the bread that Christ broken for you. In the beginning, before the dinner start, Jesus took the bread, and he broke it. And he gave thanks to God and gave it to the disciples and said, take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Go ahead and eat the wafer. Remember, the body of Christ has been broken for you. After dinner, Jesus took the cup, the cup of the new covenant. He gave thanks to God, gave it to the disciples, and said, Drink from this cup. This is the cup of the new covenant 
pour out for you and for many. Drink from this cup for the forgiveness of your sin. And do this as often as you can in remembrance of me. Now go ahead and drink the juice if you have not yet. And when you do that, I invite you to think about the, about the salvation, God's love for you. We have a beautiful family. Lee Chai family is going to sing for us. And as they are singing, I invite you to come down to the rail if you would like to pray. Or I invite you to go down to the candle uh, station there if you would like to light a candle so that the light of Christ can shine where the darkness is. Let us be in the attitude of contemplation throughout this song.
When you are here, you also come with your offering. I ask that you will continue to give, and I thank you so much for your support, for your love. Thank you so much, Lee Chai, for your wonderful music and your children. You've been practicing a lot. That's amazing. Thank you, thank you. And you can also give online as well, people who are watching online. You can go to our bulletin, aim your camera onto the barcode. It will lead you to a, a site that you can donate online. And now I invite you to join in me in a thanksgiving prayer. With open hands and thankful hearts, we offer to you all this ready yours, O oh Lord. Everything we possess is a gift from you. So you freely give us what we need and you promise even greater treasure that awaits us in heaven. Take what we offer and use it for the goodness of your kingdom. Help us share generously with others all that you so graciously give to us. Amen. Let us stand for the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God, all creatures here below. Praise God above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy going to give the benediction and then the closing song will be used as a prelude all right god is good all the time and all the time god is good. children of god may you leave this place knowing that god is always with you wherever you are in a little bit the acolyte will come up and take the light of christ throughout the world with you all look at your left look at your right that is, we are now in the, in the sea of, of the Red Sea, that Moses apart the sea, part the sea. And then when we walk out, you look to your left, you look to the right, you will see the garden. That is the promised land that we are going to. So as you leave this place, you will go into the promised land. You will bring the good news of Jesus Christ to other world, that the world will experience hope, love, and mercy and forgiveness. So go in peace. May the Spirit of God be with you. Now, I invite the uh, worship team to lead us in the prelude, at uh, the postlude, I mean. God bless you. Yeah. 